Hey, what is up, everyone? And uh, yes, we are addressing Mr. Nelson again. Like my old dog's name, he he can be adorable at times, but you know he's really just annoying. And I have my friends, uh, the Planning Atheism here, and this dude who likes stalking me on my channel, Stubman Smith Jr. from the Unapologetic Apologist. So uh, before we, I, I know DA didn't watch the video completely, but you know, Stubman, what do you think of the video overall? It was horrible. No, it's I about a minute and a half in, I started throwing up a little bit because Aaron Ra is really insufferable. He, he thinks he can just win uh, arguments with arrogance, and he's he's every stereo every atheist online stereotype just packaged in one of blob. Of All of his arguments are slogans. It's just slogans for arguments, interrupting people, arrogance, and it's just he's impossible to watch. Other atheists would do themselves good to just excommunicate him from the atheist community. He's right. too big to fail. Yeah. yeah. Well, sadly, a lot of them uh, get their arguments from him. and But, you know, he's been doing this for 20 years. But uh, before we start the actual video, we're going to play a clip that I found on this one channel. Amazing channel, by the way. You, sh you should definitely subscribe and hit notifications, notifications on this. DA probably knows uh, what this video is, but, uh, you know, we're going to play it anyway. Uh, this question's for uh, Arn. Um, you, uh, you mentioned that in 20 years of rigorous research, you found no evidence, uh, I think you said, of Christianity. But no, 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 that's not what I said. I said in 20 years of arguing with Christians that they told me that, the, that I'm wrong about the belief in faith, that faith is not a belief that is not based on evidence. Right? I say that faith is a belief that is not based on evidence. They all say, oh, yeah, we have evidence. I say, okay, fine. What is it? And I've always specified that I'm looking for scientific evidence. They ask, what evidence would I accept? I said, how much evidence would you, would you accept? They would ask. I said, I'll take anything that qualifies as evidence. Any body of, of objectively verifiable facts which positively indicate or exclusively concord with that particular position. I'm sure in Aaron Morales, uh, you know, preparation for his debate with Insider Philosophy, I'm definitely sure he watched all these playlists and have has constructed multiple arguments against these, but uh, probably not because he didn't even take the stack of papers Michael Jones gave him. So, you know, but he's been doing this for 20 years. His, his incredulity is good enough. Well, if he's a professional atheist, then that he has an incentive uh, uh, not to be persuaded by evidence. Yeah, you know, there's that too. Over any other. In 20 years, I think I get, without I get exception, okay. there has been no one to present any scientific... I just love how Eric is like, okay, I get it, I get it. Well, until, like, that that's a trick to say scientific evidence for God. It's like, the, the atheists know that they're, that that's, it's, it's kind of just setting up this paradigm that you can't break, because even if you say, like, well, scientific evidence for the beginning of the universe, and then philosophical argument, and then they go into all the kind of Matt Dillahunty stuff, where God's not in the premise or the conclusion, and so it's just... You can't break through that. Yeah, well, he's changed. He's uh, switched the subject anyway. The 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 uh, the questioner asked him about the definition of faith. Now he's he's prattling on about how he's not satisfied by any evidence for God. Or for don't 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 you just love how he gets to tell Christians what faith is? Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, he's been doing this for twenty years. So, but you know, anytime you cite a scholar, that's an appeal to authority evidence that actually indicates the Christian God or indeed any God or in fact anything supernatural at all. Okay, I appreciate the clarification. So, you mentioned that in 20 years of rigorous research you found no evidence of what you're looking for, but then when Michael pressed you on naming just one scholar who defines the word faith in the way you put it, you couldn't name one. So my question is, could it be possible that your research is maybe flawed, biased, and even may be dangerous to the pursuit of truth. I have conducted this experiment, as I explained, over and over and over and over again, having this exact conversation at least once a week for 20 years. Not one Christian ever has produced evidence. He didn't either, nor can you. No one can. It doesn't exist. That's not the I debate. Demand I, I just love that diagram I found in my old logic textbook. 
about what an actual argument for ignorance is, and Matt Dillahunty commits the same thing with his dodge. By the, by the way, I love the way uh, uh, we probably uh, could find out who the, who the guy who's, who's asking the question is. The 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 guy it's who's Eric Hernandez. What's that? It's Eric Hernandez. I know oh, him. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, he asked uh, Aaron Raw about bias, and Aaron Raw responds by preemptively saying that he will not be able to say anything to him that will convince him. So he basically <laughs> proved the bias charge. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. And that anybody, anybody in this room who calls yourself a Christian, if you think you have scientific evidence to indicate you're God, bring it. You ain't got it. I win. Okay, a simple wrong would have done just fine, but... Then Sorry, my question upset you, but that wasn't my question. But I'll move on. Thank you. Michael's face at the end there. Where's so, yeah, uh, uh, Aaron Ra tells everyone that there's nothing they can say that will persuade him, but he's uh, completely open minded and completely open to any uh, lines of evidence. What makes you say that? Oh no! Are we gonna have to watch all sixteen minutes of this? Um, try and get through as much as possible. All right, I'm gonna. Yeah, well, to... I I suggested playing that that first oh. video to, to to illustrate how badly uh, Aaron Raw performs when questions are put to him. Now here's him on the street, uh, badgering people with questions. <laughs> just, I think you just like badgering people in general because yeah. you can't do it in public forum or online forum. No, no, I, I did not watch any of this video. Is this uh, street epistemology, or is he just going? No, he, he's just um, – tell, tell you what, Stellman, I, I think we're just watched apart with this one woman here. Well, just based on the title, it sounds like it's a Christian event that he's showed up to, but I could be wrong right. about that. No, you, you, you're probably right, and he probably is just badgering Christians, but I could be wrong about that, but I don't think I am. Why do we have Christianity divided into 30,000 different denominations? It's 35,000. Get it right. Because it's throwing a dart blindfolded. And wherever the dart lands, you draw a bullseye around it. Everybody. I do sort of like that analogy, but I, I use that with atheist epistemology. Well, right, just, just right off the bat, th th this is kind of like the religious pluralism argument is... It's it's self defeating because the atheists just conveniently exclude their worldview from the analogy. So like pe people say, oh well, of course you're one religions right of the three thousand religions, and it's like, well, all you have to do is expand the definition a little bit from religion to worldview, and you could just say to the atheist, oh, so atheism just happens to be true among all the thousands of belief systems out there, and the same could be done with his dart analogy. He could be drawing the bullseye around atheism. Um, atheism is not a worldview. It makes no metaphysical, epistemological, mm -hmm. yeah. ontological, and logical mor and moral morality claims. So, funny enough, that's worldview. what deflating atheism came on my channel to talk about. It's dumb. I think I was there too, but you know, I didn't have much to say. Well, the the, the claims often come in, in bundles that are usually associated. But I see uh, Aaron Ra here is kind of uh, assuming his conclusion that there is no evidence. So, so anything that you believe has to be. Uh, a completely arbitrary, and he says, you know, throwing a dart and drawing a bullseye around it. He he's assuming that there's that there's nothing that would prefer one conclusion over the other because he's assuming his own conclusion that there is no evidence for any any Christian uh, claim. Yeah, and to counter the thirty thousand, uh, usually it's thirty five thousand. I just go ahead and say thirty five billion because you know numbers don't really matter. All denominations ultimately, and in, in the Protestant camp, ultimately agree on the essentials, so it doesn't yeah. really matter. And a lot, a lot of the differences aren't even theological. It's how you, how their church is constructed, and how their ceremonies go, and so on, and services. Yeah. He's claiming to know things that none of them know, but when you walk away from faith altogether then suddenly something goes different if you start following evidence instead of faith now everybody's going back to the same one and only conclusion we all agree on and can demonstrate to be true so you're saying 
blindfolded, throwing guards, you know, whatever we end up faith. being true. Faith, is, faith is the most dishonest position it is possible to have. It is inherently auto-deceptive and cannot lead to truth because there's no way to define what is correct and what is false. So who, who wants to go first? Wow, th there was a lot. There was a lot in that, but yeah, this is this is kind of uh, well, he, he, he talks at like five thousand words a second, so it's. I think he does it on purpose. And, and it's it's all garbage. It's it's all garbage. Uh, oh, first off, he after he was corrected in the clip we just watched before this, he's still going on with the the faith is a belief without evidence line. He's still continuing with that after he's been corrected how many times? How many times has he been corrected on that? Uh, and then further, he makes the the risable assertion that people who uh, follow evidence must all arrive at the same conclusion, which is well, well, well. That's funny because he contradicts what he said earlier. So first, he's hammering the Christians because of how many denominations, but then he's going to pretend as if, oh well, if you walk away from faith, everybody comes to the same conclusion. When you could just say, well, there's denominations of atheism. Some of them believe in free will. Some of them don't. Some of them, you know, have erring beliefs on determinism and all kinds of different things. Um, so yeah, there's denominations within atheism, and he's just going to ignore that. Even on definition of atheism and when you get into agnosticism and and most and w when they want to find atheism as just a, a belief in uh as a lack of belief then all other religions are atheistic towards christianity so you know you, you have those type of denominations but you know that that gets into what is the definition of atheism and i think paul draper has the correct one <clears throat> According to your worldview, how do you tell what is correct and what is false? How do you know what truth is? I've been, you know, this is what I've been trying right. to ask you. What, I, what I've been trying to answer over and over again is I've been protectfully answering. You just haven't heard it yet. The truth is what the facts are. Repeat it back. That's not circular. I, I, he's so condescending. He's so condescending. I know. Oh, no. I'm sorry. You don't get to talk to women that way, you prick. But, you know, I'm just a gentleman. Uh, yeah. so, so there, I think there was a lot more to this conversation. Yeah, well, you, you, I think you skipped over it. But yeah, uh, he was obviously badgering this woman and, and for who knows for how long. Well, she asks him a really good question here and he just completely dismisses yeah. it. Yeah. Don't have to say it again. You are saying the truth is what the facts are, yes. but how do you but know what the facts me, right? are? <laughs> How do you know what the facts are? He just keeps restating what he was saying before. Because a fact, as I already told you, is a point of data that is objectively verifiable. Okay. Bye. <clears throat> Logical positivism. What? So so how do you know that objective is is could be a brain of that? Even though he this the all could be imaginary. How do you know what is objective? One of the things you should examine about your belief system is one of the first uh, arguments of apologetics against any kind of evidence. Yes. This isn't an argument from apologetics. Well, I know. It's basic epistemology. How do you know reality exists? This is what she's asking him. And for, for some reason, first of all, he just assumes it. And well, uh, Hold on. I just by the way, what he's about to say is a classically postmodern claim, which is not an argument of apologetics. Postmodernism lines up far more with atheism, historically speaking, also, than with Christian apologetics. It's, it's really idiotic. Well, it's just a result of the Enlightenment. Uh, <laughs> did you have anything to say? Uh, no, like, he's, he's making all sorts of uh, uh, risable assumptions here. Yeah. Of course, of course Nelson does. Is that reality isn't real? But that wouldn't change it. No, that's <laughs> reality. Is, no, we're asking how do you know it's real, and how do you know what the details of that are? Is it are you an anti-realist? Are you a realist? What what what's your metaphysics? And of course, Aaron Rothfeld just rejects the idea of metaphysics because he's a logical positivist. Well, no, I mean, I mean, the woman is asking him is is asking him to give anything that would identify his worldview. Instead, he throws out these and that and he, like, you know, reality is what's real or whatever the hell he said, as if well, as he said most of that. He said one of the classical arguments of apologetics is that reality isn't real. And I'm like, what apologist has ever made that argument? Nonsense. Absolute nonsense. They, they may have provoked it as a thought question about skepticism, you know, using, well, you know, should we go with reasonable doubt or no doubt whatsoever, which is Cartesian certainty. 
Well, and uh, the idea is reasonable doubt because obviously it can be doubted whether I'm having this conversation with you guys now, but is it reasonable? And, well, and yeah. I'm getting ahead of myself because I know what he's about to say and maybe I shouldn't spoil it, but I'm just going to say this real quick is that's a postmodern claim and he's about to make a postmodern claim in the affirmative later on. I won't say what it is, but just see if you can spot it. Anything, your position would still be wrong even in that case. So if reality is real, I'm right, you're wrong. And if reality is not real, if we're all a brain into that, you're still wrong. But I have a ultimate standard no, you don't. from God. No, you don't. Says that it's, how do you, you don't have a standard. You don't have, because you have many, nothing that indicates many, many what is right or what is wrong. Uh, nothing that says which is true or, 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 or what is what metaphorical and what is literal. You can't discern any of it. Without the scriptures, yes, you're right. It would all be arbitrary. With the scriptures, you are powerless. The scriptures offer you nothing. They are absolutely wrong about absolutely everything back to front. There is no truth in the Bible. Yeah, there's an Ethiopia somewhere, but that doesn't mean any of the stories that happened there. Yeah, yeah there was a pilot. That doesn't mean anything that, that he did. I just love how he was like, oh, there's some country called Ethiopia out there. There's a lot more archaeological findings for the Bible. <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry, I, I'm just baffled. I, I am really shocked at how bad this is. I really had no expectation of how bad this would be. This if this is a random woman he grabbed off the street. I, I don't know. I to be fair, I don't know the context. I don't know if she went up to him and started asking he's questions. Better at the beginning than he is. Huh? Like, he's throwing out these ridiculous assertions. And, and there's no evidence behind any of his assertions. They're all just bald assertions. Well, and atheists are, they, and he, he loves to do this, and I know a lot of people love to do this, is they love to cherry-pick the Bible. So they'll ignore parts where it talks about, like, the earth being round, and what, obviously, because he says it claim, it gets everything wrong about everything. It's like, well, not when the earth gets round, but then they want to pick things out of context to make them sound outlandish, like the, sh the breeding sheep, you know, putting certain ones in front of the fence, and that's something like to pick that out of context to make it sound ridiculous, but it just shows you he doesn't know what he's talking about. Well, I, I also, me and Spartan Theology did a response to Truth Wanted. There was a lot of archaeological claims, and one was, well, you know, camels weren't domesticated around until the 8th uh, BC, or 8th, cent 8th century BC. I don't, know, I don't know if that's the right way to correct it, but basically, no, they, they, they were domesticated way before then, and it's just bold claims like these are corrected by archaeology, and archaeology is proven showing the, the Bible to be more reliable and truthful every day. So, uh, Yeah, like on a monthly basis, there's always some major ar ar archaeological find that validates some part of the Old Testament. It, it's, it's like happening very frequently these days. Yeah, because we have more access. Like in the 19th and 20th centuries, for political reasons, we, well, we, archaeologists, archaeolog people who do archaeology... <laughs> Could, could not access those areas. So, yeah, that's why we're getting more more findings. Oh, I can't speak today. That's beside the point. Don't hold me accountable. I'm As pleased. opposed to every other day? Yeah. I see how it is. I guess I'll just have to kick you here. Okay. I'm out. And the stories actually happened. Or he actually did that. The Bible says that you know there is truth. The Bible says that it is I do know there's truth, yes. And that truth is what we can objectively is, verify to be true. And that truth that you know is that God exists. No, no, that is not a truth. Truth is what the facts are. It's not a fact that God exists. Okay. According God to is an empty assertion. Not God is an empty assertion. Everything about everything in the Bible is just absolutely false. That's just an empty assertion. Can, can you imagine how uh, ridiculous he looks to people who don't know who he is when they see this guy in red and black just on the street, just with his umbrella? Just <laughs> they probably think he's a saint or something. Yeah, yeah. Well, effectively, I think he is. Yeah. If I could just make a small comment here, everything Aaron Ross said up to this point is an empty assertion. Exactly, exactly. Thank you. It's like the fact is God doesn't exist. It's like, okay, argument behind that, please. No, I don't think we get one. No. Oh, we're buffering. 
dead air. This is awful. I'm going to keep pressing you on this. According to your worldview, what is truth? How do you discern what is false? I will repeat bad? now. I'm going, to, I'm going to have to get you to, understand, to repeat back these because this could be like the fifth time I've told you what you keep saying I haven't told you. The truth is what the facts are, right? What we can show to be true, objectively verified. That means not according to any one person's opinion. So you can confirm with other people or with testing. But we could all be wrong ultimately, right? How? Well, I'm asking, could we all be wrong? Isn't it possible that we could all, we should, could all be we a should delusion? Assume, we should assume at all times that we could be wrong about any number of them. See, I think he just contradicted his epistemology there because at first he's saying there's realist claims about reality. We can know what reality is by objectively verifying it through our senses. But then, yeah, you should doubt every time. So then how do you know your senses are real? You, you should be doubting. That's his epistemology. That's his epistemology he just claimed there. So you can't, I, I, I you can't verify your senses with your senses. It's circular. And at that point, he just made himself an anti-realist and ultimately as a I, I actually think you're giving him too much credit there because because it seems to me what I heard is either a, a tautology. He says things like, you know, truth is what the facts are or something like that. Well, and then yeah, right. he says truth is whatever we can prove. Well, no, that can't be the case because the, the universe exists prior to our ability to, to find out truth. So that can't be the case that truth is what we are able to prove if we're already assuming these truths exist. So yeah, uh, it's either tautological or just uh, completely incoherent. Yeah, and I think I think a point that she's actually pressing him on, you know, is this idea of you know he's trying to make truth synonymous with the facts, and the the reality is is facts ultimately is data, and data can be conducted and it can be biased, and it can you can have a you know a bad set of data, and so that that's not you know synonymous with the truth. Yeah, well, he's operating from the assumption that, you know, the, the consensus of all people who, who seek the truth all must converge in on one point, which is completely ridiculous. Here's a question. Do people seek the truth? I think in Western society, we don't. I think I, we're I don't think Aaron Ra does. No. <laughs> he claims to, but, you know, he either has a really bad epistemology and he actually wants to find it or he just doesn't want to know the truth. Either way, he, he doesn't have the truth, so. It's like he's trying to do street epistemology, but he's just kind of half-assing it. He needs he needs a little app that shows him where to go, and so he just starts saying, "You know, truth is what what exists," and just inanities like that. Yeah, yeah. Things because how are we ever going to improve if we think we're absolutely right? So what you're telling if me you now claim is absolute truth, if I love how he thinks he's absolutely right. Oh, well, just, yeah. just, just let it play out. Just let it play out because this is what I was talking about earlier. You're lying to yourself. Is that absolutely you, true? Is, is what absolutely yes. true? Yes. Yeah. So you if don't believe in truth. If we claim absolute truth, then we're fooling ourselves because you can't improve. Is that absolutely true? Yes. For logical reasons, you should understand. So you believe in absolute truth? No, I don't. I said, true. If you claim absolute truth, What I'm trying to demonstrate is that your worldview. There's the postmodernism. I know you're yeah. trying. Well, he, he just like he he laughs as if oh my goodness, what you're saying is absurd. But she made a really good point, and he, he contradicts himself. Yeah, and, and he's so condescending to her, but yeah. she's running rings around him. She pointed out the 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 absolute contradiction in, in what he's saying. And he's still condescending. He's like, well, I, I'll have to tell you this again. I'll have to have you repeat it back to me so I can make sure you're understanding it. See, it's one thing to be condescending, but when you're condescending and you don't know what the hell you're talking about, then you should just not talk. Well, that's the Dunning-Kruger effect. That's the Dunning-Kruger effect. People who think they're the most competent are, in fact, the, the least competent. Yeah, and it's it's because earlier the what we were talking about when he was saying it's a, oh. an, a uh, sorry sorry no, no, earlier what he was saying it's an apologetic argument to say reality isn't real. He's trying to force the postmodernist postmodernism on the apologist, and now he's saying no, you can't claim absolute truth. And so now he's the postmodernist. Well, what I think is behind that is is often as kind of an object lesson, uh, you know, uh, and and apologist. We'll, we'll cite the example of, of, you know, how do you know that we're not in the matrix or something? They'll say something like that as a way of kind of 
prodding at, at kind of our epistemology and say, well, how, how can you know these things absolutely to be certain? And it's true that, that apologists will say things like that, not because that's what they believe. Right. They're doing as a thought experiment, you know. <laughs> that but you can't because you're deluded you don't know the difference between the word true and the word truth that's a problem for you it's not a problem for me okay i've been asking you what is truth you've been repeat i i i, I wonder if the principle of charity has ever crossed his mind at all no it hasn't like that was a rhetorical question well, he, he's making a very, a very semantic point here, and I don't really understand what what its application is to, to the discussion. But yeah, I guess truth is a quality. And I mean, yeah, true, true is a quality, and truth is kind of a, a, a noun. But yeah, I don't know what where he's going with that. Yeah, I, I don't know where he goes with all this stuff all the time. Repeating the answer over and over and over again, and then you ask me the same question as if you never heard a damn yeah, thing. My morality the truth is what the facts are. Truth and facts both the same in the... See, she's probably not getting it because you, you just keep asserting the same thing without explaining it. Yeah. So, yeah, I, I would keep asking the same question. What do you mean? Well, she could just say, well, the facts are God exists and that Jesus died for your sins. You know, boom. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but those aren't the facts. You're deluded. She should just say, truth is what the Bible says. Repeat it back to me. Uh, yes. <laughs> Thank you. But they can be objectively verified, not according to anybody's opinion, not according to my subjective conscience, but what I can verify to be true. I love how he says that, but then in the, in the previous video, for the past 20 years, I've been, I've been conducting these experiments, and not one Christian has produced evidence. That's his own subjective consciousness, so that doesn't determine truth. Maybe he's somehow rational, but you, you, you can't claim to have absolute truth in your belief system like he does. Either with other people or, more appropriately, through testing. But obviously, we have a much different way of thinking through things, and we have the same scientific method. We have the no, you do not. Absolutely not. You have the exact opposite, you have the exact opposite of science. Everything science is or does Faith does the exact opposite. So, so science cannot ever declare anything to be absolute truth. Period. That's first. Yeah, every time a, a, a theist hears the word science, they just go, don't, don't stop talking. Demon. No. That, that, that's basically his, his uh, position on what Christians actually view of science. But, you know, Galileo, Newton, all of them, they were deluded. Even and again, it's this idea that he can tell Christians like what they believe and what they think and what faith is. Even like young Earth creationists, for example, and I'm not a young Earth creationist, but but let's just use them for an example. You know, they're not just saying, "Well, I'm going to ignore science and just have faith that the Earth is six thousand years old." They're trying to give scientific arguments for why the Earth is six thousand years old and things like that. So you know. It's one thing to say you you guys don't understand the science, but to say you duck right. your head, you you put your head in the dirt like an ostrich, and you know you, you refuse to listen, and that's what faith is. That first of all, every Bible verse you you try to read, every time someone's tried to explain to him what faith really means. <laughs> well, well, what's more is that is that now he's put the the realm of truth into the unknowable by by saying any 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 time that which is a kind of a correct claim but it has to be contextualized anytime science claims to have absolute truth we're deluding ourselves but you know absolute truth still has to be the objective Man, was that absolutely true yes, yes! <laughs> Science cannot say that anything is absolute truth, and that is absolutely true, and it's not a contradiction. Good, you're not a logical positive, positivist because now you believe there can be truths that aren't verified by science. Congratulations, you're you're one step closer. That's the first thing you've you've yeah. affirmed to be true. Congratulations. He's assenting to the existence of truth. It's just not within the domain of the natural sciences. Yeah. And everybody understands that I'm going to have to protect the police system. I, I love this comment, though. 
Well, watch where you're swinging your umbrella there, guy. <laughs> I, I wouldn't be surprised if he's actually hit someone accidentally when he does stuff like that. He badgers so many people, you never know what's going to happen. I don't know if I can have a conversation. I like so serious credit to her for staying calm and being yeah. polite through the whole thing. I don't know if I could do it. Yeah. Oh, I love called him the villain from uh, Pocahontas. <laughs> right. Like the, I, know, I, I know. I know. First Peter three fifteen says gentleness and gentleness and respect, but uh, my patience is only so thin. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I think there are specific types of contexts in which gentleness and respect isn't. When you're evangelizing, you don't evangelize to him at all because clearly he, he doesn't care. Well, he's been doing this for 20 years, so uh, yeah. I, people haven't made any progress, yeah. Well, I've been doing this for five years. Of course, I don't have as much experience, even though I. Uh, even, even though my beliefs actually change, so yeah, there's one thing that is different between me and uh, Nelson here. Uh, science cannot assert. I just have a question. Did you think when you came here? Did you think his answer? Have you guys seen the original Robin Hood movie with? Uh, do you, Do you know what I'm talking about, Stolen? <laughs> yep. What's the dude's name? I don't remember. Are you looking at the Robin Hood movie in the nineties? Yeah, yeah. Do you, do you know who? Do you know who I'm talking about? No. He's the dude who's on the. He, he's like the priest, and when he has all this wine and stuff, and like the gang, Robin Hood's gang, like surrounds him. This dude basically looks like him, is what I'm saying. It's sort of funny. Friar, yeah. Friar Tuck. Huh? Friar Tuck? I, I think so. But, uh, yeah, uh, either way, I was laughing when I realized that. We got two significant movie characters here arguing against people. Maybe maybe reality isn't the way we see it. Maybe the movie character, yeah. Okay, just... This, this this guy's question is going to be hilarious considering all the stuff we've just been saying about R and Ra. Wait, what? I completely missed that comment there. Like my mind just blanked out. Just just hit play. Okay. Answers would be this well thought out. I've never met him before, but I know he's very intelligent, and I know that what he's saying is. So Geez, also- she's like very nice. He's. I can tell he's very intelligent. I would have been like. Uh, I won't say what I would actually say, but you know. Because, well, the guy asked, he said, did you think, when you came here, did you think his answers were going to be this well thought out? I'd be like, well, I'm certainly surprised on how many slogans he can memorize and pair it on back as if they're arguments. Yeah. What what truth am I suppressing? Wait, wait, wait. That's a truth, which means, wait, wait, wait. This is where she goes off the wrong end here and like she was doing good and then when she went on full side and brood case presuppositional list i think she sort of lost it here well i mean that's the thing and like you can tell at least you can tell by looking at her she's very young she probably like has just stumbled on to apologetics she's probably been raised in the church i'm just i'm just speculating here and she's probably new to apologetics and has watched a lot of jason lyle videos and i really like jason lyle um so you know you can't you know be too mad at her for that, but just the, I guess still the condescension from Aaron Rod to treat her this way, it's just it's absolutely ridiculous. Well, I think he's just deluded in his own worldview, and that sort of uh, the principle of charity and love of wisdom isn't strong with this one. Yeah, well, I mean, the thing with presuppositionalism is not that it's false, it's just I, I, I kind of doubt how persuasive it would be to an atheist. So she could have sure. very easily just got ahead and just poked holes. Uh, in what he's saying, using his own standards, so it's it's not necessary to, to go pre sub at this point. The truth is that God exists. Can you show that to be true? Yes, absolutely. I have show me the standard. show me the truth that God is. Show me the the truth. The truth is what the facts are, right? Show me the facts that indicates God is true. Show me how we know that is true. 
not just your empty assertion of, oh, I believe because I have a book of magic fables that are wrong about everything. Show me the truth. Show me the facts. Show me the indication that that's true. Okay. First his emphasis, you know, clearly makes his point stronger. I mean, I'm just trembling in my hoodie here. Yeah, and of course, he he doesn't want empty assertions, even though he asserts that everything in the Bible is wrong, which is a completely ridiculous uh, uh, assertion. Yeah, uh, obviously, he doesn't mean every detail because he, he said before there's an Ethiopian, but he's talking about the miracles probably and stuff. And, and just, no, just basic history of Jesus as well, because... I don't think he's a Jesus mythicist anymore because a few people have corrected him on that. Because, you know, when Christian scholars correct him, it can't, no, it has to be the skeptics and people like Bart Ehrman who have to correct him. Well, give, give, him, 10 more years. give him 10 more years and he might finally admit that he was wrong on the definition of faith. Um, only when it comes from non Christian scholars. That's not biased at all. By the way. We have general revelation. And that which is, is a subjective impression which contradicts every other religion. I know so many Hindus that say they have direct revelation. They have a better personal relationship with their God. She she didn't say special revelation. I was going to say, first of all, he doesn't even know the, the um, difference between general revelation and special revelation. Well, which is a pretty easy difference. but uh, Well, he's not even listening because he, he's like a robot. He... Hacking atheism, that, that's your video, Rob. I mean, he, he basically just has these pre-programmed slogans just ready. And anything that sounds like it just he goes into action. At least that's what appears to me. But. Then you do. They've met it. The second one is our conscience. You don't have a first one. And they have a conscience, too. Why does everybody evoke That's the point. They do yeah. have a conscience. Yeah, that's what I'm trying to explain. Can because explain we're myself? innate. Because we're human, because we're a social species, because it evolved in us. And you're trying. No, why well, can't God just use that? That's all I would just say on that because that's presupposing his meta, his his metaphysics and ontology, which presupposes there is no God. And naturalism is all that there is, essentially. When he just he just dismissed her first point about general revelation. Said, well, the Hindus have direct revelation. So first of all, he switches it and he's talking about a specific word or a book that they have that they claim is from God. But her point about general revelation stands even when you talk about the the differences in religions, because again, you have to ask that fundamental question: Why do people, regardless of how they interpret it, have this experience of of God revealing Himself through nature? And I think that argument still holds, regardless of the differences in religions. Mm. I, I usually just use that as an argument against it. Well, you know, there are 3,000 gods you could believe in. I simply reverse it. Well, okay, true, but, you know, these 3,000 worldviews, which do not include naturalism and or yeah. non-supernatural beliefs, sort of contradict your view, buddy. So there are 3,000 worldviews you deny that hold the same string. What makes you right over them? No, well, there, there are 3,000 and one. So, so, but your, yours just happens to be right. That's yeah. Right. First. Trying to appropriate it. So you have evidence that I'm right, not you. That's that's your second one. And your first one is evidence that I'm right, not you. So what is the indication that you're right? May I explain myself? Please. Thank you. So the second one, as I was saying, is our conscience. And our conscience bears witness to the fact that there is right and wrong. Would you agree what, that murder is wrong? Yes, murder is so, objectively and wrong. Right. And so when God commanded people to murder, he was wrong. According to what standard, why is what the objective he standard wrong? First of all, God didn't command people to murder. There's a huge distinction between murder and kill. Uh, what you he, he commanded war with very violent nations. Um, anyone who denies that fact. Yeah, he told the Israelites to go to go. Yeah, he told the Israelites to go wipe out the people that were murdering their children. So, you know. Well, you know, modern America is much worse than, Cain, than the Canaanites, in my opinion. But, you know, God's grace holds up. By the way, uh, can you guys explain something to me? Uh, he seems to have taken the two points she made before and claimed them as his own. He, he seemed to have said that what she said proved he was right. Did you catch Yeah, I, I, yeah he did. I, I just <laughs> you explain the logic behind that. I, I kind of missed that. I, there is no logic. It's just an empty assertion. 
I, I just want just want to dress up as my uh, atheist character and just go harass people on the street and see how well they know apologetics and be like, yeah, I'm not actually an atheist. I'm a Christian, but you know. You just need like a black PVC outfit and like a, a cane. I, I feel like you should do like a song and dance number with the cane. You know, uh, uh, I can't dance nor sing, so. That murder is universally yes. wrong. What objective standard? When, I in according to your book of magic fables, God didn't come up with the the, the murder is wrong thing until after Moses had already murdered an Egyptian and hidden the body. So, mur- uh, first of all, uh, distinguishing whether you know he was justified in that, I'm not going to defend either war position, but I will say God never commanded that. So, now you can question, well, why would God use someone like that? That gets into a whole bunch of theology, like why did God use Paul? God is sovereign who he wants to use. That's basically one of the points of Romans 9, since Israel was arguing, well, why why are there Gentiles into the church, including the New Covenant? By the way, a non-Calvinist interpretation of Romans 9, which I have an e-book on, but that's beside the point. Uh, Rob has left us. Oh, never mind. Here he comes again. Uh, Did you have anything to say? D.A. or Stoneman Smith? Nah, because I, I want him to finish making the point he's making. Okay. Murder was already wrong. So according to your magic fables, none of which actually happened, Cain lied to God about murdering his own brother. He already knew it was wrong. So what's the point? Murder is objectively wrong. The point Absolutely. is that morality does not come from God. Oh, we're back to the friar here, but anyway... Well, just uh, just in case, general revelation and conscious, which was her original point, which he didn't understand. Every person has this and knows the moral law. When you get into the civil and ceremonial laws, I've been reading some John Calvin on this. Uh, there's quite distinctions. That's in special revelation. Yeah. Well, keep 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 in mind the point Aaron Rod just made, and this just goes to show you, geez, the the intellectual shallowness on his end. Is, is he says. Clearly, murder was wrong before the Ten Commandments, but God didn't invent the law that murder was wrong until the Ten Commandments. As if the Ten Commandments is God in inventing something new that deciding now murder is wrong. And he's trying to show that that's somehow a contradiction. Well, that's ridiculous. No, that's just when God gave that specific law in that context. But yeah, m- God did hold people accountable for murder even before then. Well, he, he's holding to what is called voluntarism, which is basically God can do whatever he wants, including logical contradictions. So God could just command murder to be right anytime. And uh, that Occam, William of Ockman was definitely wrong in asserting something like that. Morality is a careful consideration of the rights and consequences of one's actions. That's how we knew murder was wrong before we made it. He's an egoist, which there's many problems with that. Because if there's no consequences, let's say you're in a country with no laws whatsoever, and you have the upper hand and you know you're not going to, you know, oh, this person might fight back. No, this is a defenseless person, but they have gold on them. You kill them. Oh, the gold is mine now. There's nothing wrong with it according to the standard of this because there's no consequences. Well, and not only that, but it's not only that there's like always consequences or no consequences. Sometimes there's positive consequences if you're the leading dictator and you can make it work in your favor. So th- this claim that, you know, we know murder is wrong because there's always negative consequences from society. It's just, it's just silly. Hmm. Well, and even well, then, yeah. that would only be epistemology. That wouldn't actually explain why murder is wrong, just how we know it. it that as well, but there's many problems with egoism. But God to tell us but that doesn't make sense. I can just it does make sense when you realize that God is made up. And that if God is made up, we still make up our own. God is made up like the Tooth Fairy and Santa Claus and the Flying Spaghetti Monster. Well, well, they they assented to the existence both of objective morality and of rights. Uh, I'd like to hear their their arguments for defending those on the, on the natural basis. Yeah, a, a right is a merited claim that uh, that one is owed based on who they are. And on the Imago Day, that's very easy to justify. But on atheism, when you're just a clump of cells put into a certain way. And uh, ba- based on you know human interpretation of that, it's all subjective. So there's no there's no grounding for value. It's just something that is. Uh, yeah, well, that, that's the thing is that you could throw the, throw the subjectivity uh, accusation right back in his face. Yeah, and you can't call that objective facts either. So. 
own rules. We determined that if we kill each other, we're we're not going to benefit from this. This is actually to our own detriment. Why would I want to piss off everybody in my system of peers? There are judges about me. I would rather I would rather show how I care. She she should have asked him. Well, okay, take all those circumstances you've given there. Would it still be wrong? And he's going to say yes, but then he, he does have he, his reasoning won't work. For each other, because this is going to mutually benefit everyone. When you are nice to people, people are nice to you. It's a basic rule. When you fuck over other people, they're going to fuck over you, and you're going to uh, be demonetized. You're going to be banished. You're going to be killed. You're going to be eliminated from the team pool one way or another. And until you end up with people that are that have this compassion, and then religion says, "Well, you because you have compassion, my magic imaginary friend, and I can prove my." Magic, magic friend, because I have a book of fables that is wrong about everything that says so. I, I don't even know where to begin with all wow. that. He, he, so he accosts this woman on the street and he just starts condescending to her. This is this is outrageous. And you know, at, at least he, he has no bias against his, yeah, he has no bias in his biases against religious people. Well, it could be some old woman. A 99 year old in a chair trying barely able to roll herself around and he just go up to her are you a theist well everything you believe is wrong and start harassing her too yeah it's, it's like he just gets a charge from like insulting people really you don't have truth in your bible there is none there's nothing nothing we can verify to be true in any of the stories you book how do you know 20 years of experience 20 years of challenging christians i know i well clearly you challenged the wrong christians and every time you challenge someone like michael jones you're just a basic apologist uh you you sort of run away and don't take anything especially when they give you a stack of papers to read yeah look at and you don't take it there's there's something wrong with your epistemology and testing and verification and so on there's something wrong with your scientific method there buddy well i, I mean yeah he says 20 years of challenging christians so so christians are always on trial to him to convince him and he uses the fact that he has not been convinced as proof as of uh, that there is no evidence that this is kind of something i notice <coughs> i'm sorry i'm still a little bit sick Something I noticed with with like atheists is like when when they ask for like evidence for God, it's never oh well. Can you uh, point me in the direction of resources I can use to educate myself? They yeah. never say that. They always say no. You give me your evidence on the silver platter so I can swat it away. You know. Yeah, that's the mentality of most online atheists. Now there are a few atheists in my Discord server that are very gentle and respectful, and are condescending evils like Mister. Mr. Nelson here. How do we happen with this, but I'm still not getting a clear answer. What is truth? How do you know what is wrong? Could this woman get a clear answer from anybody? Maybe you have very clear answers, and you're not projecting it. Now, this, this guy who comes up, he's not very helpful. If if you remember Selwyn, eating the same answer. Oh, hold on, no, because he's because he's about to house them because they they were just saying. I'm sorry, I I have, listen. I don't think he does a super great job. He doesn't do the job that you know a lot of apologists we could think of would do. That being said, he does directly correctly contradict their point about you know the reason we know murder is wrong is because it's always harmful in society. Yeah, yeah. he he. he the spoilers because you don't have anything that we can objectively verify to be true i have a book so, sorry ken ham that wait, doesn't work wait, we were talking about morals you've heard of this guy named aristotle right he's an ancient this guy is clearly a lot more intelligent and articulate than uh aaron are all here <laughs> greek philosopher he wrote the first book in i think his dating is wrong here because aerosol was born around 384 i don't know if he lived to be 84 years old but it's independent of what is actually said Western here. Western philosophy, I mean, Western philosophy was only invented by Socrates. He wrote, it's called Nicomachean Ethics. He wrote this book in about 300 BC. How is it that Aristotle BC, was able to- 384 BC he was born, so I, I don't know if he exactly wrote it then, but either way, it doesn't matter if he's right or I'm wrong, but his point here is wrong. As in write down in a book, a system of ethics that still holds up pretty well today before Jesus. 
By the way, he argues against egoism, which is what they argued before. He he argues for a type of virtue, virtuous life, which he he argues is grounded, which Thomas Aquinas goes with as well. He argues it's grounded in the telos or end goals of thing, end goals of things, and that's basically from the unmoved mover Aristotle also held to. So he's wrong here, and Aristotle is generally used for general revelation, which is the point she made earlier that. No, the morality wasn't dictated by the Ten Commandments. People, the Israel, Israelites, many of them probably knew the Ten Commandments already, but rather this was written down so that they, they would know how it, the importance of these. Ne so, neither, did, neither did Aristotle simply enumerate a bunch of uh, Jews that oh, yeah. this guy seems to think. It, it, it's like how Nietzsche almost holds that Aristotle invented logic itself. It, no, he discovered logic. And he discovered these Nicomachean ethics and the virtuous life. So, yeah, it's not it's not something he made up. And then again, this is just moral epistemology again, not moral ontology. Exactly. Like you could take all of you because I, I like how atheists and debates will sometimes say, "Well, there's there's dozens of theories to justify morality on atheism. Yeah, you'd have to refute every single one of them." It's like, yeah, but they all have to do with epistemology. Like I could agree with all of them, say that just gets you a, a, a different epistemology. That that's just a cumulative case to prove that morality is objective at best. You would be correct on that. First of all, it, before Jesus is a false statement. Jesus has always been. And this ultimate standard of morality has been before the creation. Before the Bible, right, sorry. There's another unsupported assertion. Okay, we don't have any facts. How do you know it's unsupported? Because there are no facts to support that up. Okay, what are your facts? How are they based on objective reality? If there is no objective reality, if there is no absolute okay, According to you, when was Jesus born? We're making no claims. I'm sorry, what? According to you, when was Jesus born? According to me, according to the Bible, and we use history to back this up. But what you can't do, because the Bible says that he was born both before 4 BC and simultaneously born after okay. Four, AD, right? I actually don't have an answer to this, which doesn't mean there is not one because I haven't looked into. Unlike Aaron Ra, I haven't looked into the scholars. I know most place Jesus at 4 BC, so most likely that is when he was born. So I, I think he's probably just wrong here, but maybe DA or Stillman may have an answer to his supposed contradiction here. Well, no, I've I've heard this one before, but no, uh, it's it's like one of those uh, alleged Bible contradictions. Where where they get you know they they just uh, accost the neophyte and say oh well the Bible says this but the Bible also says this as like well if you really want like an expert opinion there are people out there who know the the you know ancient Hebrew and ancient Greek and you know can give you a, a really uh, learned opinion on these things it's kind of unfair to to uh, expect laymen to be able to answer to every alleged Bible contradiction and most of them are just assertions like. This one you would need to go into history and stuff, but a lot of them, like how many women went to the tomb, just uh, yeah, yeah. reading when you see we we do not know where he has gone or where they have taken his body. The ending of John mentions we, and she's like, that, that's a group, not not one woman going, so or specific people mentioned. Why, according to your worldview, are contradictions wrong? If you from their word, contradictions in the Bible. Let's. I'll give you that. Let's say there are. Okay, you give, you give me wrong? that he was born okay. both before four, four, four BC yeah. and I'm after not, six. Okay. No, no, no. Answer me. Why is it wrong if there he were was contradictions born in the Bible? Prior to even according to your own magic fables, which are all false about everything. Before 4 BC, no Jesus. His statement is objectively verifiably Why is correct. Wrong? Because it's a lie, because it's the same thing as Why lying. Either way, it's still a fact that Jesus was born. Because <laughs> now you would have to argue for a type of Jesus mythicism if you want to make a, a, a conclusion that has to be based off his contradiction here that somehow unpacks the truthfulness of the four Gospels. <laughs> yeah, it should be like a minor detail. Maybe. Maybe uh, uh, Matthew wrote it down wrong. There's nothing wrong per se with that. May challenge the doctrine of like extreme inerrancy where every little detail of the Bible is correct. Yeah. Uh, even then, I, I still think his claim here is false. Even if we grant this point, I mean, people debate about what was said at you know uh, Abraham Lincoln's deathbed. You know, some some reporters said something. 
there, there are two different reports as to what that reporter said. So I guess we have to assume that Abraham Lincoln never existed since there's some discrepancy. Or, or, or he never or, or he never died. So yeah. So he, he he's still living now. Or just vanished. This is the person who thinks that no, she no, has I'm an objective to, reality or an, an objective see. morality. I'm trying, I'm trying to, get, to get, you get you to see. Okay. I'm trying to morality. get you to see. That's what she's telling me. Morality so, comes from consideration right. of the consequences of one's actions and the rights of the people involved. It's okay. that simple. That's not what Aristotle argues. So. Ooh, ooh, ooh. This, that's one of the things is they, they just when this is what Frank Turk talks about is they're smuggling in a moral law to even make their claim considering the rights of people. It's like where do you get the rights considering the consequences? Well, who decides which consequences are good and bad and who decides you know which consequences I prefer for myself? Like and what if I don't care about consequences? Like you don't get to just smuggle in all these ontological standards and then say but we're building it from the ground up. Yeah, it's it's the basic uh, is problem. I'm gonna go kill somebody. So what? Did so you, you violate that person? Sorry, what? Did you consider their rights? I, I don't care. I'm just gonna kill them. Then you did not. Then you didn't do anything right. moral. Right. So you're Why not being. Why do I have to care about their rights? What? Why do I have to care about their rights? Because it's in your best interest. Yes. Why, yes. I don't. That that's literally egoism. I have an article on this: egoism versus the virtuous life. Which, by the way, I quote Aristotle. For the virtuous life, and I quote uh, Ayn Rand, who is an atheist, by the way, surprisingly believes in free will, but uh, argues for egoism. So, if you want to see some good reputations on that, I'd check out my article there. Basically, you assume self interest is a good thing, and it really doesn't prescribe, it just describes circumstances and what you should. What what your best interest would be? It, it's not a prescription of anything. It's just basically survival at that point. But then you can ask, well, what's the point of surviving, or why should you care about your best interest? Objectively speaking, obviously subjectively, everyone wants to you know not die. That's why religion is made um, up as, as um, a mental um, crutch. Like. Not to bring up a touchy subject or anything, but that that claim's not even true. Some people do just want to die, and so they do, and it's like that's in their best interest, according to them. Like they take their own life because to them that was in their best interest. So like, yeah, you they, they you can't just make these universal assumptions. Yeah, they might want to go to go to jail and get three square meals a day. So okay, all kill and go to jail. Yeah, that was like uh, Brooks and um Shawshank Redemption. Because you're a social species, which means it's that's innate. True, Unless you're that's not true. And our, no, our yeah, in Nazi Germany, Hitler said it's okay to get, kill people because that was in his best interest. That was in his best interest. <laughs> yes, it was. Lay it the smack it down. This guy, uh, Bob, Bob, no Bob, Bob, yeah. I, we need to make a meme where we like blue screen his background. Random dude enters the fight. He dropped the H bomb. On a, uh, I'm not gonna make a World War II joke because it'll be too too appropriate for what he was saying. In in our best interest, it was okay to to drop the bomb on Hiroshima and the other uh, state, whatever it was. But uh, it doesn't matter. But when he killed people at that time, he said, "We're doing right because it's what I want." Did he or did he not? But he's not. A, he's not he, observing their rights. It doesn't so matter. He, he still he still kills them. He, he they keep switching between you know best interest and people's rights should be respected or yeah. taken into consideration. It's just like which one is it? And, and if it's both, then and many best interests, just like what this dude is saying, it's okay to violate people's rights for your own best interest. I, I I love I love his uh his full throated moral condemna condemnation of the Holocaust. He wasn't respecting their rights. <laughs> that was Hitler's crime. He wasn't respecting their rights. Oh my god! If only he had taken better care of them. <laughs> if only had maybe maybe if he looked inside his heart. Yeah. 
Doesn't well, matter be, 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 because moral, because it only matters and does pretend that our God said. Here, here's, here's, here's just the thing, okay? Number one, it's like I was talking to another one of your gentlemen. You go, I, I said, why do you lie? And he goes, well, tell me why you lie. Have you ever lied before? Have I ever? Yeah. I yeah. Why? Why? No, no. Be honest, child. Everybody no, used that in your you, 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 you have lied as an adult, yeah, yeah, and you knew better, I've right? Why do you lie? Too, but I've learned the lesson of both. Lies and violence are the same yeah. thing. Aaron Lai has been lying during this whole video, meaning he doesn't tell the truth. Why did Why did I just have a flash to bed the college students at protesting Ben Shapiro events? Because he said lies and violence are the same thing. No, you don't get to equate speech and violence. You don't get to do that. And you still do it. Violating somebody else's rights but you still do it. And you can't if I mislead you, if I say something is the it. truth, you know like wrong, God exists, and it's it. not a verifiable fact. You can't sit here and tell me you haven't lied as an adult, because then I'm going to call you a liar. So I don't know. I mean, I respect you. I'm lying either way. Yes, yes, because you know you have not Let's answer the question. Is it yes or no? So let me ask you this. Let me ask you this. So this seems to be a Kantian view of ethics, okay? So if a murderer comes up to you and says... To explain Kantian ethics, which I respect this dude, because he actually knows some stuff. He, he's read some literature, I'm guessing. But Kant basically out to deontological ethics. There are these things called categorical imperatives where there are duties in which no matter the circumstances, you should always do that. So, like, it would be wrong to lie to protect Jews in your basement, you know, during World War II. Well, you know, let, 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 let's see what his possible reputation is here. That other person... By the way, I don't hold to it in that circumstance. I think there's yet to have an ontological or deontological standard, which is unchanging, which would be God. So I think Kant had the right idea. I just think in, in the wrong place. By the way, his grounding is some un unknown thing in nature. <clears throat> Tom Jump, but beside the point. I would like you to tell me where the next person I'm going to murder, where they are. Do you tell that person the truth, or do you lie to them? No, I, I, I don't lie to them. I won't, I, won't, I, won't, I, won't, I won't tell them the truth. Right. No, no. There are times when it's ethically... No, no, no. It's still wrong. It, it might be ethically... I, I, I think he's he's probably wrong on this. Um, not, not the guy who just argued his point, but... um. A gentleman here, because I, I I think that uh, deontological ethics can can be refuted through thought experiments like this. But this almost has nothing to do with the grounding of it. It's just talking about moral epistemology and uh, what oughts should be. Right, but it's still wrong. It is still wrong to lie on under under under. Okay, answer the question. You gotta understand who set the law. Who set the law? It's the God that you don't believe in. It's the God that I can't set the law and you can't set the law because we're wrong. Because we're wrong. Because you. Why do you lie? You have yet to tell me why you lie. Why you lie? Give me a reason. We have to make our own ethical no choices. Choice. Is it wrong to lie in your world? In some cases, yes. Some okay, cases. let's go. Let's go in the case you say yeah. facts that are not. Okay. And I would say there's sort of a deontological ethics behind why you lied in the first place. It's for respecting their rights and uh, you know, not not to allow the worst evil to happen, which is murder, which. Preventing said event may be a, day, a category imper categorical imperative in and it of itself. So I'm not necessarily arguing for Kant's position. I'm just simply giving an alternative here. Yeah, well, I mean, I mean, with the with the Ten Commandments, I mean, isn't there is it like isn't there a context for understanding where it doesn't it like specifically talks about you know if you do something that would like harm someone if you. Uh, you know, give false witness against someone, or, 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 you know, lie in such a way that would cause grave harm to them. It doesn't necessarily include fibbing. You know, I I won't know where that is specifically. To be honest, I know there's definitely a distinction with the seventh commandment. I think thou shalt not murder. Some translations have kill, and I think it should be translated as murder. Yeah, well, I, I think and since there are new te there are Old Testament laws saying that self defense and killing person in daylight is okay, if it's for self defense and obviously war. So, and, and not even going to Greek, just context in general. Yeah, Hebrew. I think like the term like bear false witness has kind of a, a shade of meaning like that. Yeah.
Of course, I don't think there is times in which God lies in the time of the prophets, but he definitely withholds information, which I see middle knowledge taking a play into, or at least some forms of counterfactuals. The murderer comes up to me and says, I need to find my next victim. Tell me where they are. I lied to them because that's the right thing to do. How about this? Okay, let's say you're the murderer. Or you just don't have to answer unless he's going to say, well, the murderer is going to murder you. In, in that case, then, you know, I'm the, ne I'm the next person who's going to be murdered. If you ask me that question, why come I can't say I'm not going to do it? There you go. There you go. See, do, you, do you really think that, a, that morality doesn't exist without God? The, 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 book, the book of the first book. Now, now, this is where it's just a straw ban of the moral epistemology. Are you really saying people can't be moral without belief in God? It's the grounding problem. It's just like a hard thought. They might as well say, do you think people can't be conscious without God? No, it's why we have consciousness and objective morality in the first place. Don't, don't state the obvious facts, which is the truth according to Aaron Raw. Even though facts don't say anything, your conclusions from those facts do. That's why uh, his, his epistemology sucks, but that's beside the point. You are going to say something, DA? Nope. I mean, yeah, he did. He did make a, a a valid point with the with the you know if a murderer asks you about a person, that was a valid point. Yeah, I think that's about the only um, valid point from the atheist side in this video. Yeah. Morality was written before the Bible, three hundred years before the Bible was supposedly written. God is the standard. It's all written down by Aristotle. Here's what you don't understand: you can't set the standard, and I can't set the standard. It's not a standard. It is a standard. That's the difference. It's not a standard. God says you do what I say, or you suffer the consequences. That is not a standard. We have to make our own choices, and you're still making your own choices because you have to interpret said standard. Hitler made his own choices, but it's wrong according to you and me. Did you know? Did you know that Hitler's birthday was celebrated? Every year in great fanfare in the Catholic Church. Did you know that? I'm not a Catholic, so it doesn't matter. Did you know that? It doesn't matter to me. Hitler was a man of God. No, he was not. And he, men of God can do evil things. No, 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 no. I, I, well, I agree. I'm not going to dispute whether uh, I don't think Hitler was a Christian. Hey, hey can we Google this, please? <laughs> that is such an outrageous claim. I. I'm not going to Google it, but one well, of you guys can if you want. You can Google it, I guess, while I play the rest of this. I, that's, honestly, I thought I've heard everything. That's a new one on me. Yeah, I, I haven't heard of that either, but again, it's just the point. <laughs> can you really call someone a man of Christ, a man of God, who slaughters six million Jews, even though Jesus uh, came first for the Jews, then the Gentiles? Yeah, I, I, I don't think so. Unless you believe in contradictions, but yeah, I don't think there's really you to do. Guy? Say about this that that was a whopper. Oh yeah, no true Scot Scotsman fallacy, you know. Man of God, no, man and do you evil you things. Follow you, obey my commandments. No, Hitler was not a man of God. That's not Which, true. But, well, then, well, then how did he get his That's birthday celebrated true. in the Catholic Church? <laughs> yes. I uh, one point I may agree with you. The Catholic Church can be corrupt. <laughs> Has been corrupt, or corruptible, so or corrupted. So what? That means I, I, nothing to me. I, 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 that that, that means that okay. means nothing to me because he was not a man of God. Well, so yeah. Wait a minute. No. So what? It doesn't matter. You can tell. You can celebrate Gandhi's birthday in the Catholic Church. He still was not a man of God. That does not. No. 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 According to his beliefs, he was a man of God. That is not for me to answer. No, it's not. No, it's not. But, but God says don't do it. So Jerry does. Jerry does. You don't. Really? Well, not to you. That's fine. So you, are, you, are you telling me that it's right to kill six million people? If there's a world in which prophecy comes Based on what? Based on what? You have no truth. You have no knowledge. Who, who read that standard? Because Hitler thought he was doing right. Wait, you, you and I don't make the law because we're flawed. That's right. We, we have to, and, that's, and that's the whole point with Christianity. You have to have somebody above the... I love this video that just came up. <laughs> Well, that's that's basically it. Yeah. Oh Lord! Yeah, I was trying to hear what Aaron Ra was saying to the girl because he was still. Yeah, I, 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 I probably tried just the same stuff. 
Oh, oh def, def, Mr. Deflating or Mr. Atheism, your mic is muted. Right. Yeah, we went. We they the whoever was filming that went into uh, Friar Talk. Yeah. So we we kind of dropped out of Arid Raw.